Hi, welcome. Today I would just like to introduce to you our two Baker's Bicycle dough pucks. These are two frozen doughs, 470 gram pieces in both multigrain and white. And I just really want to take you through the basics of how to use them and introduce you into some of the ideas of what you could make with them. In this box, you'll find here, we've got the white version. Put that out of the way over there. And we've got the multigrain version. As you can see, really simple, just straightforward pieces of frozen dough. The beauty of these is their versatility. You can make loaves out of these, you can make bloomers, you can add flavourings and inclusions to them, you could make pizzas and focaccias. Pizzas, you just cut that in half and basically you get two good 12 inch pieces out of that. And later on we will show you, um, how, you how you do that in a slightly separate video. Uh, and then obviously you can do exactly the same with the multigrain, which also makes a really good pizza for capture, etc. And we'll show you all of that later. But today what I'm going to really do is just take you through the basics of how to use it. So as you see there, I've just taken it out of the internal packaging. And here I've got a pre-floured um, baking tray. This baking tray, anything that will actually fit inside a refrigerator, your own refrigerator at home, will do the job. And I'm just going to pop them on that tray like so. And then we're going to get them to defrost. Before we pop them in the refrigerator though, what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of food safe plastic, cling film, something like that, and then just oil that, and that will stop the, the dough getting a skin on it and keep it nice and soft and pliable when it is defrosted so you can mould it. So I like to use one of these little sprays, you can buy these in any of the supermarket brands, etc. Um, but these work really nicely. You can just rub a little bit of oil on there if you wish. And basically all you'll do is lay that over there, and that will keep the air from getting to the dough, the top of the dough and let it defrost nice and gently. You can do this ambiently, it will take around about four hours at a normal room temperature but whenever you can we always recommend primary is to pop this into your refrigerator and leave it overnight. So if you were to pop this in the, the refrigerator about eight or nine in the evening, when you get up the next morning about eight or nine that should be ready to go so you can make yourself your nice freshly baked bread. Okay, so We'll take that and we'll pop that into the refrigerator. And when I pop that in there and leave it in there, and what you'll get out the other side, as if by magic, in time on the tradition, here's some I did earlier. And this is what it will look like. So these are two of the doughs that I got out yesterday, and I've left these overnight in my refrigerator to defrost. And this is what they look like. So we'll just take that paper off or that film off. We'll keep that because we can use that again later when we're doing, going through the proving, proving process and you end up with two pieces of dough like so. You can see, they're soft, they've grown very slightly but not much. The refrigerator stops the yeast working, it's called retarding, so that basically it will only grow really, really slowly. It needs warmth before it will really grow. So it's quite robust, you can leave this in the fridge a little bit longer, it won't be a problem, but you wouldn't want to leave it much more than sort of 18 to 20 hours ideally, but in an ideal world, 10 to 12 hours defrost and it's ready to go. So what we're going to do, we're going to make two really quick, the simplest ways of using this dough. We could literally just leave that piece of dough on there and let it prove up and you get a really lovely bloomer. But we're going to make a tin loaf first, just to show you how easy that would be. So just a very simple non-slick uh, metal tin here for baking in. I like to put a little bit of flour in, you don't always have to, these are non-stick, should be okay. But just in case it's an older one, pop a little bit of that in there and we'll do the white one. So we'll take that white loaf and this couldn't be easier because all we're going to do is pop that into that tin, just pop that down a little bit, and we'll put that to one side. And that we're going to prove up, which I'll come to in a moment, but really, really simple. And that's going to give us a really nice 400 gram tin loaf. So about half a normal sort of 800 gram slice loaf that you buy, this will give you a 400 gram version. Then with the multigrain here, which is really my favorite, I love the flavor and the sort of, of the texture of this multigrain, it's a beautiful flavored bread. Um, we're going to use one of these. These are called bannetons or proving baskets. Again, you can buy these online, really, really easy to get. And if you just type in proving basket, you'll find, you'll find them quite easy to get. Come in various shapes and sizes. This one would be obviously to make a round or a cob style. And in a later video, we'll show you how you'd mold one of these to make a cob. But we're gonna use the oval version today because we wanna keep it really simple in this because this is just the basics of how to get a great loaf with very little work. So you could, in the first instance, these proving baskets come with this little um, linen liner in them. So the simplest way to do that is dust that linen liner with a little bit of flour. The more you use it, the more non-stick it becomes, and you would just drop that piece of dough into that linen liner and leave it to prove. But 
if you want to just make it a little more interesting, when you take the liner out, the bamboo, as you can see, gives these lovely lines around it. So when the, the bread sits in there and proves, it takes on that lovely visual on the outside. So it gives you a really cracking, rustic looking loaf, which you'll get to see in a minute. So if we're gonna use it that way, again, we'll take our flour and we'll just give that a really good dusting. Now you would treat your proving basket before you use it. Um, so these are older ones. Normally what you do is you spray them with a, a really thin misting of water and then you spray them, you dust them with flour like this and you leave it to dry, knock the flour out and it kind of proves the basket itself and makes it a little bit non-stick. So I've already done that. So you don't need a lot of flour in there then. And literally all we're doing is taking that loaf, popping that in there like that. And again, a little bit more flour on top, just around the edges particularly, to help make it sure it doesn't stick. And then we're gonna leave that to prove as well. Okay, so proving. Okay, that's the next, the next trick is to get the proving sort of just about right. And that is really, really simple. Gonna be doing this at room temperature, so obviously it's always gonna vary. People always say, how long does it take to prove? Can't give you an exact time because it depends on time of year, the temperature, etc. But at a good room temperature, it depends on how warm your kitchen is, etc. You're probably going to be looking at about an hour or so for these to prove. But the key thing is looking at how it grows. And you want it to comfortably double in size. If you look at it now, it's that kind of level. You want it just coming across the top of the tin there, etc. And the same with that. You want it just coming to the top of the basket. And if it was a bloomer, you'd have to look at it and go, okay, that's about twice the size. So roughly speaking, that's going to take an hour. So I've got those in there. I just take that greased paper that I had earlier on, which is absolutely fine, the greased um, film. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put that, in this instance, I'm going to put it over the back here. Sort of like a nice warm spot in my kitchen, or even if you've got an airing cupboard or something like that, that can work fine. And if you don't mind flour all over your clothes, that can work an absolute treat. And all we're going to do now is we're going to leave that sitting at the back, and we're going to give that about an hour, and then once it's proved, we'll come back to it and have a look at what it looks like. Okay, so it's been about an hour now, and uh, here are our two loaves that we did earlier on. And as you can see, they proved up nicely. So I'll just pull this off of there, and the oil just stops it sticking to the top. So we'll take that off of there, and you can see, if you remember from earlier on in the video, you can see how that was sitting quite well down. It's now just come over the top of the tin, so that's looking lovely. Still got a little bit of spring, you want just enough spring in there so it's still gonna do what it's called oven spring in the oven where it will rise a little bit more. And there's the banneton basket. Again, it's just come up, just about to the top of the basket there, and looking lovely. So, what we'll do now, we're gonna get these into the oven. So they've now proved up, good double size for the loaf, I'm just going to keep this really simple. I'm going to dust it with a little bit of flour, just for a nice little visual, and we'll do that split. And then a little bit of extra flour on here just to make sure it doesn't stick on the tray. And for the banneton, I've got a tray here that's already been um, uh, floured, and I've got the, the banneton basket here. And we tick this up, and give it a little wave, and out she comes. Now look at that, doesn't she look lovely? You can see those lovely lines down the side there, and that when it bakes up, that'll just look really lovely. She'll, she'll rise beautifully. We'll, we'll put a little cut in that just to help her rise. And those, those little lines and grooves will just make it look that little bit special. So that's the, the banneton basket. Really, really simple. Uh, and then obviously the loaf. So what we'll do, we'll quickly put a couple of cuts in here. Now you can do these with a thing called a lame or a razor blade, but obviously not many people have got those at home. So we're gonna keep it simple and just do it with a really nice sharp knife. So little knife here that's nice and sharp. And we'll do a straight split um, split loaf here, so I'm going to just literally pull straight down the middle there. Nothing too clever, just straight down there, and you see you've got a nice split, and then we'll do, do a side split on this one, just like so. Little split, don't be too shy of it, get in there, and cut, and there we go. And then, we're going to get these into the oven. So I've got preheated oven over here, and, and this oven has been preheated up to, I've got it at about 220 degrees, so if you can get to 220, that's brilliant, and I'm going to pop that one on the tray there, Going to put the loaf on the side there, and in an ideal world when you're baking, if you've got a steam setting on your oven, which uh, if you'd be very lucky if you have at home, but if you have, then great, put a little injection of steam in there. But if you haven't, really simple to do. I've got a boiled kettle of water here, I've got a tray in the bottom that's already hot, and I'm just going to put a splash of water in there, not too much, just enough to give us a little bit of steam. And what will happen is that will evaporate through the cook, but the steam, one helps with the rise, it helps to give it that little oven spring. It also helps the bread to form a crust. Then as the steam boils away and it dries out, it then helps that crust go, not that, uh, crust go nice and crispy. So they're in there, gonna let that bake through now, and those 
at about 220 are going to take approximately 25 minutes. So we'll give them 25 and then we'll have a look at them when they come out of the oven and hopefully have two really cracking looking loaves. Okay, so that's been 25 minutes and our loaves should be ready. So let's have a quick look in here and see what we've got. And absolutely, they are looking spot on. So okay, this oven was on 220 for 25 minutes and these loaves are looking just right. We'll check that, but I'm pretty confident, I've done this once or twice, that these are as they should be. So, first of all, we'll get the tin loaf. You can see that there, that looks great. Because it's non-stick, it comes out lovely. And hopefully you can hear that. Lovely hollow feeling, it's got a lovely, lovely crust on it. So that, really nice little four, 400 gram tin loaf ready to go. And then here, we've got that multi-grain that we did in the, uh, in the Banaton basket. And you can see those lovely lines around it just make it look rustic, really farmhousey. And then the split, which just lets it open up that little bit more, gives it a great visual, and lets the inside aerate a little bit more as it rises. And there's your two loaves again. Lovely, lovely crust on it. So, as simple as you've seen through this whole video. Defrost, mould, prove, bake, and you've got freshly baked bread, that simply. But when, it, when it's cooled down a little bit, pop it into a little plastic bag or something, and that'll comfortably keep for a couple of days. And, well, it won't last that long, that's for sure, because you'll find everyone's gonna wanna eat it. But, that's how simple it is to make a loaf of bread using our fantastic basic bicycle frozen duck.